Respondent Kevin Cork, who is live in the briefing room. We heard you get the first question there. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders also talking about removing security clearances from some former Intel officials, Kevin. Yeah, Messrs. Uh, Comey, Clapper, and Brennan. Very interesting to hear her sort of float this idea. Uh, John, she really talked about the notion that the administration is merely investigating its options. It is clear to you and to me and to all of the American people that each of those gentlemen has had very public differences with the President of the United States. Here's the White House press secretary describing what the White House is looking into. Not only is the president looking to take away uh, Brennan's security clearance, he's also looking into the clearances of Comey, Clapper, Hayden, Rice, and McCabe. The president is exploring the mechanisms to remove security clearance because they've politicized and in some cases monetized their public service and security clearances, making baseless accusations of improper contact with Russia or being influenced by Russia against the president is extremely inappropriate, and the fact that people with security clearances are making these baseless charges provides inappropriate legitimacy to accusations with zero evidence. Yep. So you heard him mention, uh, you heard her that is mentioned a couple of other names there, Rice, McCabe and others. Uh, what's interesting here, John, is Sarah Sanders is talking about the notion of politicizing and monetizing the information that they have. That's information they still have access to. And that's the real question for the American people. Should they in particular have access if they're still going out there making very strong political statements in opposition to the sitting president of the United States, John. Yeah, I think a lot of people might be surprised to know that you can still keep that access when you leave the office. Uh, what about the back and forth with Iran? What's the latest on that? Well, this is interesting, too, because, uh, look, you and I have talked about this on a number of occasions. The president has been very forceful in his opinion about the Iranian leadership. Uh, the White House is sort of in a coordinated effort right now, John, where they're talking about supporting the Iranian people, but also being very strong in their opposition to the Iranian leadership. Uh, Sarah Sanders talked about it. The president, obviously, very forceful on Twitter, which we've been talking about all day long here on Fox News. Let me share just a bit of what Ambassador John Bolton had to say uh, in his previous conversation with the president today. This, again, is part of that coordinated effort by the administration. You have the tweet by the president. You have Mike Pompeo's speech and, of course, his statement. And then this from John Bolton. He said this. I found it fascinating. Uh, John Bolton saying, I spoke to the president over the last several days. And President Trump told me that if Iran does anything at all to the negative, they will pay a price like few countries have ever paid before. You may have heard John Decker mention, our radio colleague here at Fox News during the press briefing, that that was similar in tone to what the president had to say about the North Korean leadership. Of course, that led to an eventual face-to-face. -face. When asked if there might be a face-to-face -face in the offing for, say, Iran's leadership, the press secretary punted. John? Mm. She also weighed in on the Russia investigation, Kevin. Yeah, this is, um, well, I tell you what, given everything that we've learned, uh, Tom Fitton's group over there at Judicial Watch, uh, we're learning a great deal. I think the entire American community is learning a great deal about what led up to uh, the eventual uh, Mueller investigation. Uh, I tried to ask her about Carter Page and that FISA document, that application, which it has been alleged uh, relied heavily on the so-called Steele dossier, which was, as you remember, funded by the Clinton campaign and the DNC. Here's what Sarah told me not long ago. Uh, the president wants to has purposefully uh, remained uninvolved in this process. Uh, he said repeatedly that he wants the Department of Justice to be fully transparent with these requests from Congress. Uh, and he's going to continue at this point to uh, remain uninvolved. However, he sees more and more every single day that this is uh, proving further and further to be a total witch hunt, particularly because it was based on a false and unverified and discredited dossier. John, you may recall that Devin Nunes, a congressman from California, has been very strong in his assertion that they should, the president that is, should take away all the redactions. If you've seen that document, I mean, it is littered with black ink, if you will, when you print one out. Uh, they want to remove a lot of those redactions so the American people are at a minimum. Congressional leaders can get a look at what actually went down in that FISA application. Very interesting times. Here at the White House, John. Indeed. Kevin Korg there at the briefing room. Kevin, thank you.
Adam Arley joins us now. He is a former U.S. ambassador to Bahrain and former deputy State Department spokesman. Uh, first of all, the, the idea that uh, people like uh, Jim Brennan, the former uh, uh, CIA director, keep their security clearances after the White House, now the White House is threatening to take that away. Is that going to ring alarm bells in Washington, Ambassador? Well, I, th I think so. I think it'll ring alarm bells among a whole host of senior level civil servants and, and uh, U.S. government officials. I mean, look, it's not just Brennan. He talked about McCabe. He talked about Comey. These are, Dem these are Republicans as well as Democrats. And I think that we're going down a slippery slope. I mean, who's to decide what's political and what's not political? Who's to decide who gets withdrawn and who doesn't get withdrawn? So, you know, this to me, this strikes me as a way of lashing out at the president's critics. But, you know, that's part of the job is to is to defend your positions and to explain to the American public why you're right and they're wrong. But, but attacking them this way or going after them that, in this way or uh, slanting the playing field in this way, again, seems to me to set a pretty dangerous precedent. But when a former CIA director comes out and says that the news conference uh, that he held in Helsinki with Vladimir Putin was treasonous, I think was his name, or bordered on treason, that's pretty strong stuff from a, a guy like Jim Brennan. It is strong stuff, and I think it, it might have crossed the line. But what I also think is interesting is he was talking about a public press conference. He wasn't talking about any privileged information, any access to information that, that he had that other people didn't have. He was talking about what every American saw on television and was voicing his opinion. Why should that uh, encourage retaliation from the president of the United States. Yeah. Uh, speaking of retaliation, the president seems to be threatening Iran right now in an all caps tweet. Uh, he really went after uh, the, the mullahs there. What do you make of the threats that the president and, frankly, the Iranians are trading right now? Well, I think it shows uh, heightening tension between Iran and the rest of the world. I mean, look, let's remember Iran has been identified by this administration as one of its top foreign policy priorities. They have a history of developing nuclear weapons, of developing ballistic missiles to de deliver them, and to uh, undermining our allies in the area. And I think the administration is serious about pushing back against them. They've withdrawn from the JCPOA. We've announced tough sanctions which will take place in November and which will prevent Iran from getting revenue from oil sales. The Secretary of State yesterday said he was uh, support, the United States supported the Iranian people in their quest for justice against the mullahs. So I think what we're seeing from Iran is basically feeling the pressure. Rouhani, the, their president, threatened to close the Straits of Hormuz. Hey, let's remember, 20 percent of the world's oil supply goes to the Straits of Hormuz. The fact that Trump responded that they better be careful if they threaten the United States and international commerce I think is a threat to be taken seriously, and it was, it was fully warranted. Could they actually close the straits? Uh, that would bring almost immediate military act uh, activity from, from countries like the U.S., would it not? Uh, I th yeah, it absolutely would. I mean, like we, like we should all know, the, the Fifth Fleet is based in Bahrain in the Persian Gulf and is there for, for the precise purpose of keeping open these straits. I think what we're seeing, though, again, is increasing desperation on the part of the regime in Tehran, which faces unprecedented public protests and public dissatisfaction with the clerical rule. The Iranian currency has has lost more than 100, almost 100 percent of its value. It's gone from 30,000 to the dollar to, I think, about 90,000 to the dollar of the last year or so. So they're in trouble, and they're, you know, I think trying to bluster their way out of a dead end. But... Trump and the U.S. administration are making clear to them there is no way out other than uh, accepting our terms. Now, they can, they can cause problems. They've done it in the past, and they're capable of doing it in the future. Ambassador Adam Arley, thanks very much. Thank you.